Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and watchOS 10 RC is now out to developers and beta testers. This released alongside a lot of other updates with iOS 17, iPadOS 17, and many more. And this update should be the last version that's released to developers and beta testers before it's released to the public, as this is set to come out on September 18th, which is on Monday. So not too long from now, we should have that along with iOS 17 and iPadOS 17. macOS 14 Sonoma will be out a little bit later. Later. Now, as far as this particular update, if you're already on the beta program and you want to go back to the public version, all you need to do is turn off your beta updates as you've already got the final version. If there's not an RC2, this is the final version. You just get to use it early. So once the public version is actually out, just turn that off and you're good to go. This particular update was pretty small at 318 megabytes. That's on my Apple watch ultra. And unlike iOS, it doesn't have to reinstall the entire OS once it updates to this version, which is really nice. So it's a pretty small update coming from beta eight. Now this update has a few nice new features that Apple announced for the Apple watch ultra two as well at the Apple event. But first let's take a look at the build number. Then we'll talk about what's new. So we'll go to our settings here, scroll down to settings. Then we'll go to general, then about, and you can see this should be the final build number, 21R356. And in this update, Apple has included a few new watch faces. Now we knew about some of them. This is my modular watch face with the Lumi app in the middle. We'll scroll over. Of course, we had Palette before. We also had Snoopy, and there's about 120 or so animations, it seems. But if we go over, we have a new modular ultra watch face. This one is pretty nice in that when we move, you'll see that the compass moves. Let me zoom in a little more. So you'll see the compass moves as I move my wrist, which is really nice. And then we have a bunch of different information, things such as elevation here on the left. You can see that change as I move up and down. We've also got any complications we want. So if we press and hold, go to edit, you can see elevation. We can change that to seconds or none. Then if we scroll over, we've got different styles here. So if we scroll down, you can see all different styles. Again, night mode. So you can see what night mode looks like. We could have it on or off or auto, which is really nice. And then also a bunch of different color options, just like we can always pick. So lots of different things to choose from. Pick whatever one you like. I'll put it on multicolor for now. And then if we go over again, we can select our complications. So if we want to change this, we don't want maybe the compass. We want something else. We can change it and modify it. And that's everything you can do with this new modular ultra watch face. Now there's also another watch face called solar analog. Again, you can modify this a little bit. If we scroll down, you'll see some of the lines change in the background, pretty minor there as far as that goes, then light. And we have a dark mode, which looks really good. So this dark version, I think looks the best. And then if we scroll over again, we can adjust colors. So I think that looks really good. Maybe I'll leave it on blue for now. I'm not sure. I like the red and the blue, but either way we have a nice new update there. So that's solar module. And then of course complications. So you can change this to whatever you'd like. And there's some featured ones at the top as well. So if maybe we go down, let's see if we can put maybe the Lumi complication that I like. We'll go here. That's a paid app, but let's see, countdown to sun time and that's it. So that's the new solar analog watch face. And additionally, we get a Nike globe watch face. So this one, if we go to edit, you'll see here again, we can modify the colors, what it looks like. It has the globe here. And again, we've got complications. Then if we scroll over, there's not anything else. So we just have our color and our complications. We can adjust, make it whatever color we'd like to match what we're using, whether that be a watch band or something else. So that's really nice. This goes along with the new updated Apple watch series nine, Apple watch ultra two. However, that's more of a chip upgrade than anything else, which should be nice for speed and overall usability, hopefully some more efficiency and battery life. But in general, most of these are, nice to have, but nothing incredible. I do like the modular ultra watch face. I may use that one or the solar analog. Both look pretty good. Now, additionally, there's some new updates with Siri. Siri will actually give you health information now. So if we press and hold, what was my heart rate yesterday? And it starts to measure it. If we ask about sleep, I don't measure my sleep with this. It will recognize that. How much did I sleep yesterday? 
and then it brings you right into sleep. You'll see it's nice and fast and works as expected. So lots of updates as far as that goes. Ask Siri about any health information and then it will work. Now additionally, we've been waiting for that new name drop feature. We've had that on iPhone, but we don't have it from iPhone to Apple Watch yet. In fact, if you go to Apple's Watch OS 10 webpage and scroll down to name drop, it tells you what it is. It says easily share your contact information with a new friend. Just tap on my card complication and bring the Apple Watch face to their Apple Watch. So you'll see, or to face their Apple Watch, you'll see it has a little number two there. If we scroll all the way to the bottom, number two says available on Apple Watch Series 7 or later, Apple Watch SE second generation, and Ultra models in an update later this year. So maybe Watch OS 10.1 or something else, but Apple has not released it with Watch OS 10. We thought maybe they'd update it, but so far it looks like it's coming later on. Now, as far as if you should install Watch OS 10, well, you definitely can at this point. Just be aware that you cannot downgrade on your own. You would have to bring it to Apple to have them install watchOS 9. And at this point, since it's releasing in about a week or so, you shouldn't be able to update or downgrade it at this point. So the update is pretty stable overall. You may have noticed there's a few different stutters or slowdowns here and there, but for the most part, it's nice and fast. If you haven't used watchOS 10, it's a little hard to get used to the digital crown not doing what it did before where you have to tap the side button to bring up the control center. So some slight changes here and there, you get used to it pretty quickly. Unfortunately, switching to dark mode is automatic on the ultra watch faces. It does it on its own based off the ambient light sensor though. So that seems to be working okay. It was actually dark at night last night and it's nice and bright this morning. It did it on its own. So it's great that it actually does that now but you can't adjust it with the digital crown anymore. As far as bugs or anything else, I haven't really seen any. Everything seems to be loading nice and fast. If we go into activity, of course, I don't really have anything for today, but the other day with activity with walks, all of these updates are really nice as far as the way things look. If we go down maybe to maybe ECG, everything is full screen now, which is really nice. And if we continue down, we'll go back into settings so we can take a look at the battery life, but performance and everything is nice and fast. If we go into weather it takes just a second, of course, that new system on a chip will be great with the new update. So everything seems to be pretty quick and performing as you would expect. I do notice that maybe the siren color changed a little bit. That's a minor update, but not really anything major there. If we go back, We'll go to my battery and we've been using this for about a year now, or I've been using this for a year. If we go down to battery, scroll down, you'll see battery health and I'm currently at 100%. So this hasn't changed at all. I put it on the charger every night. It has optimized battery charging enabled and it seems to be just fine. Much better than my iPhone 14 and the watch OS 10 betas have been pretty solid. So no real issues there. I'm pretty impressed with watch OS 10 so far. It seems to be a really great, huge update, especially for a lot of the apps where they just didn't have the full screen look before. This will probably improve even more in the future, but if we let that load, you'll see the world clock. Everything is a full screen app now, and I think it looks great. Now, if you've found anything else in watchOS 10 RC that I haven't mentioned, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. It's sort of an updated version of what we have with iPhone 15 wallpapers. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.